As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on parts and tools I use in today's video. Today, we have a 2008 Hyundai Elantra crank. No, no crank, no start. Um, turn the key, just click nothing. Let's check it out. Let's see what it takes to diagnose this thing. Okay guys, so here we are, we're looking at this thing. And the first thing I always like to check, there's typically about four, four things or so that'll cause your car not to actually turn on. And bad battery connection is gonna be the first one. So you come down over here, just kind of grab a hold of your connections, twist, twist, oh, and check that out. We can see that that is twisting. Now, I already know that that's not the problem, but if it twists like that, you go ahead and just kind of pull it up and just kind of look and see. Like we can see that one's not that dirty. You could pick up like a battery terminal cleaner and it's gonna look something like this right here. And you can, right here, it's got that little, little wires or whatever. And you twist, twist, clean. And then you take the top off this thing and then you clean. So that could resolve one issue. The other thing is you may have to replace the actual connection. Um, you can search Fixbook battery connector replace and you'll find a video showing you how to do that. But basically you just cut the wire, um, get you like a little universal and then it'll bolt on. After you clean the wire off, you need a big pair of wire cutters. That's another solution. Now the next thing we're gonna check is the actual battery, okay? And we're gonna do that. We're gonna take our little battery tester. There's a link in the description below for one of these. And all you gotta do is put our positive right there our negative right here it likes the that side so I'll try and get that side on the terminal and look at that 11.43 that's it's already a bad sign a fully charged battery is 12.6 volts so we're gonna hit this hit this and 128 that is not enough okay so got 128 cranking in that will cause It'll make it look like a bad starter. It'll either do nothing or it'll click. You'll be like, oh, my starter's bad. I got the click. No, it can be a bad battery. That's why you want to check it. You don't want to just start putting on parts. Now, let's say this read is 600 cranking amps. Then we would know, hey, you know, that's fine. If you say your connections look fine. That looks fine. Next thing I would be going after, where is the starter on this thing? I want to say it's back there behind that exhaust. I don't see it yet. Look, we're looking together, guys. I think I see it back there. Maybe. I'll throw up a picture here in a minute um, showing you where that starter is. But basically, you have a big red wire going on to the starter. You have a little tiny wire. Sometimes it's black going there. And because it's black, people think, oh, it's the negative wire. No, it's actually your control wire. When you turn the key, the car sends 12 volts to that little control wire, and that is what activates your starter. The solenoid, it's kind of like a big relay, so when you send a control current over that, it tells the starter to go ahead and start up. And the way you can test that is if you take something like a power probe. Where's my power probe? Oh, it's all the way back there. Um, you'll hook up your little tool. It's got two little alligator clips. I'll show you what it looks like. And it'll be like this right here. I was looking for a pin earlier and just plug this in you took you you'll have two little alligator clips put one on the negative of your battery one on the positive you'll find your little control wire it can be black or red or any color really and then this is a probe okay you can disconnect the connector that small wire on the starter um, and then just stick this into the starter and then up is positive so you'll be sending it positive wire that's the up that's the positive down is negative you're gonna to want to give it positive current now without taking the connector off you can probe that wire just kind of hold the wire don't stab yourself twist 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 you're gonna make sure it's nice and sharp twist twist you'll make a connection make sure make sure make sure the car is not a manual and it's not in first gear or in gear because when you do this if your starter is good your car is going to start to go in whatever direction you're in gear it, always make sure you put up your e-brake, make sure the car's in neutral, if it's automatic, park is fine. But that's how you can test it. Now, if you get all the way down there, you hit it, and then it clicks, you know, hey, um, it's probably a bad starter. The other thing you can do is probe that wire, have somebody get in it and try and start it. And if you only got five volts going to that controller wire, you know, hey, I have a connection issue. Maybe a relay is not connecting all the way or something like that. It needs to get 12 volts, whatever the battery reads, right to that control wire. 
Um, so that's how you can kind of check and rule out the thing. I'm going to pause the video and throw up a picture of the starter. All right, so I know that was not the greatest picture of the starter, but it should give you an idea. This is not a starter video, but you find your starter, like I said, put it on a little control wire. And the other thing, um, if you get no voltage, say you probe that wire, you have somebody turn to start it and you get no voltage, that could also be an ignition switch. That's another possibility. I don't see that a whole lot, but it is possible they do go bad. Um, and lastly, why is it low? Hmm, let's check the alternator. So that's actually what's wrong with this one today. And I'll be replacing that here in a minute and I'll be making a little video there too. Now to check the alternator, the first thing you do, first and most obvious is go ahead, give it a jump, say it'll run. Um, then you're gonna take a little digital voltmeter. Let's make sure I'm looking at everything. <coughs> so we're gonna turn on to 12 volts. So let's see if we can get both of these in. All right. Boom, boom, and I got it on the wrong way. It doesn't matter. Um, it matters if you're jumping it, guys. <laughs> but see, we got 11.39 volts. So go ahead, start the car with the jump on it, and then you should expect to see 13.5 to 14.5 on the volts. And that's saying there's enough voltage to be able to push electricity into the battery. Now, if you're just reading the same 11.39, I think mine was reading like 12.3, which means, hey, the alternator is trying, but it's not strong enough. Okay. So you do that, right? And if you don't have your 13.5 to 14.5, you know, hey, there's something going on with the alternator. Now, most people will be like, oh yeah, it's a bad alternator. But there's still more we can check, guys. So next thing we would do is while the car's running, put one lead here, and we're gonna keep an eye on our voltmeter. We're gonna come over here, and we're gonna come to the back of the alternator. Okay, I got it in my view. Now, I've got it in the camera. All right, so you're gonna come right there and then look at your volts, okay? And from there, if you have nothing, you know, hey, we know nothing's coming from alternator. Like, it's not possible that there's a bad fuse between the two. If those numbers were different, then we'd know, hey, maybe there's a bad fuse, okay? Say, so, because you could have charge 13.5 to 14.5 coming off the back, but not at the battery. At that point, we'd say, you know, it's a bad fuse, maybe a bad relay, maybe a bad wire, or something like that. The next thing we got to check for is this electrical connector. So the connector you see on there, I'm going to just go ahead and unplug it. And you want to make sure on one of these, this is two pin, you can see it's got the pins there. So you're going to put one on the negative really doesn't matter with this voltmeter because you're not gonna hurt anything but you're gonna stick one here so if it's negative or positive it doesn't matter you just need to know the number so you stick one here you come back on the other side and stick it say right there or right there and you're looking for one to give you like 12 volts um, because that tells you the car will give the alternator like 12 volts um, to tell it to cut on so if we, if we see that, we know, hey, the car is commanding the alternator to come on. And sometimes it can, I believe it can be a 5 volt, because um, your computer is like a 5 volt system, so it could be giving it a 5 volt input. Um, but on a lot of cars, it's 12 volts. So as long as you don't have 0 volts on both of those, then we know, hey, the car is telling it to cut on. Um, and you also, if the alternator is working at all, when you unplug it and disconnect it, you'll hear a change in the RPM because when you plug it up and it's telling the alternator to come on, it puts more of a load on the engine. So if it's doing nothing when you're unplugging it and plugging it, you know, hey, this alternator is not responding. But without checking the volts, you don't know if it's the computer, a wiring problem or a connection or the actual alternator. So that is kind of the gist of how you would check the alternator. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else. You can always plug in your scan tool. There, these things were kind of the most common. There can always, 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 there's always that like 0.001% chance it's something really super weird. Um, so you could plug in your scan tool, just kind of check and see if there's anything weird. Look up the symptoms and causes of that code and see if it relates to what you're dealing with. So anyways, that's it. That's how I diagnose this Hyundai Elantra. Um, to see what the no start was all about and we found this alternator so thank you guys for watching and i'll see you again next time